All right, folks, back on the Boss Man Show, front of the show, Coach Josh Pazner, Georgia Tech, Yellow Jackets, right up this road for us here in Midtown Atlanta. Coach, how you doing? Making the talk to you again. Great to talk to you, and uh, it's been a great season, a lot to talk about, and excited to talk about it. And, uh, um, you know, we, we had done some things here at Georgia Tech that had not been accomplished um, ever, you know, and, and, and over the last two years, over the last two years of eight during ACC play, we, we, we had set some records that had never been accomplished. We have done some things over the last two years during ACC play that hadn't been done in the last 30 years, 20 years, 15 years. So just a lot of positives, uh, really, really proud of our young men. It was a great season, won an ACC championship, got to the NCAA tournament, obviously just devastating news not to have, the ACC player of the year. I mean, like I try to tell people, you know, you're not missing the guy who's just some kind of, you know, just some random guy. It is the premier yes. league, the ACC, and the player of the year in that league is not able to play. But as we all know, just in general, you know, um, COVID is still out there. And when you're in the middle of a global pandemic, you know, things can happen. And, that, and as we've seen in the tournament with VCU not being yes, able to yes. advance or play because of, because of COVID-19. And so the most important thing I always like to say, if you have your health, you really are a true billionaire. Because uh, yes, yes. it doesn't matter how much money you have. If you have your health, you really are a true billionaire. But so obviously it stunk for him not to be able to play Moses Wright. But most importantly, he's healthy. He's all good. Um, and that's that supersedes, you know, any game or 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 you know win or anything like that. So really, really uh, proud of our overall young men and and just a great run and um, uh, looking forward to next season. Now at this point, let's go back to Greensboro and seeing talking about the game on my birthday against Miami, March 11th. Jose got hurt, but he came back out there. To me, that's just like Jose Alvarado right there. Gutting it out, mind making the run at you. They, they, they're they tired, but who makes the play? Jose Alvarado. Or, you know, yeah, the one thing about Alvarado is, you know, he's just tough as nails. And now listen, when he went down, you know, it's interesting when guys go down and they get hurt, the first I you know, go over there with the trainer, and obviously I'm not a medical guy, person, so whatever the trainers and the doctors say. But the first thing I do ask to the guys, did you hear anything pop and did you twist or turn it? Because if it's just like a, you know, when you're when you're holding your knee, that's the first thing. Because those those usually, if you hear a pop, if you twist, you turn, that could be a little bit more of an issue. I knew it. I knew he had hurt, but it wasn't because I knew he said I ran into his knee. And anyone that's played sports or just in general, and you bang knees, that is painful. Now it's not a ligament, you know, you, you it's more about a pain tolerance. So yes. when he went down, so I knew. It, he didn't tear or hurt, you know, break anything or twist or do anything like ligament damage. But I knew the pain because it's bone on bone mm -hmm. and you bang it. And um, he was in pain. But, you know, so but I and it was just going to be based on him being able to get up and down. And he tough through it. And what he's done the entire time he's been here, he's just tough as nails and he competes. And I've told you this before and I've told other people what makes him so special at his size He's an elite competitor. You can't play in this league if you, you at his size in the ACC and be who he is unless you're an elite competitor. You got that right. And what is great about it is that your team, you're undersized. But guess what? You all compete like crazy defensively, offensively, in your zones, mix, mixing and matching it up. Those guys are tuned in, locked in, actually together and connected. And to be undersized the way you are and defend the way you do, leading in steals, not in the country, come on now. People didn't realize your team did a great job this year. And just think if, if there's all these young men who you had developed in your program all these years, and you said it, it was going to be a five-year thing in year five. People doubted you, but I never <laughs> did. But you, you show you had a plan. You had to trust the plan and look at the plan in action this year. Yeah, and, and I appreciate it. And you've always been a huge supporter, and you've never wavered one bit. I'm forever grateful for you for that. And, um, no, you're right. You know, look, I remember in, 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 the, the, in April of 2016, on the Final Four Saturday down in Houston, Texas, I was meeting with Mike Babinski at the time, was a Georgia Tech athletic director, um, a few other people from Georgia Tech and the search firm person. 
interviewing for the Georgia Tech job. And during that time stretch, I told them, because their whole thing was about getting back to the tournament, that it was going to be a major rebuild. It was going to take a long time. How, where do you, what's your vision? And I laid out my vision. I told them five years, we'll get back in the NCAA tournament. I said, I didn't say three, didn't say four, and I didn't say six or seven. I said five years. And I, it's always been the back of my mind because I've always wanted to make sure that we follow through on what we said in order for us to get there. And I really felt once our name was called on that Sunday, it was like mission accomplished. You know what I mean? And, but, but, but you're right. Look, when you're taking something over that you're trying to rebuild, I mean, there are no quick fixes. No. It's going to take time. And the best way for it to take time, and I said this, but I believe in order for Georgia Tech to be successful, and here's the thing, it's, it's in order for Georgia Tech to be successful in today's ACC. Yes. Not when Coach – because obviously the success that Coach Kremens has had, Coach U at all, but it's a different league now. There's 15 teams in the league. So – and there's a, and it's a wide variety. And so I have said it's not – you know, because people say about the one and done. Yes, that's what Coach Kremens – but we're not that this, in this league. So with 15 teams, I said we have to get old and stay old. That's going to be our best way of being successful in at Georgia Tech in the ACC. That's one. And I said, secondly, you've got to have really good guard play. I think yes. that's really important. And then third, you've got to have great player development. And those are things that we've done. And that's kind of been my vision of, of along that. Now, can there be happens, you know, obviously when you're getting old and staying old, there, there could be – peaks and valleys because you know the goal is you want to sustain it but you've also when you guys leave you're trying to build it back up to get old and stay old the key is to try to continue to stay old with the transfer portal you have that opportunity to stay old now the thing is two things one is people have asked because of the seniors because of covid the nc2a allows the seniors to come back if they choose to do so without, with, you know, for their eligibility and not using the year of eligibility. They have a free year to come back. I've told people, I don't know what they're going to do because part of it is they've said, it's not about not coming back to Georgia Tech. It's coach. I don't know if I want to do a whole nother year of academic work at Georgia Tech. It's a very, because as you know, it's a very hard, very hard school. And for those guys that come back, you just can't play sports. You've got to also go into classes still. So They've got to debate that. But the second part is I also think this for Georgia Tech and for your listeners um, and, and fans of Georgia Tech that, that it, it, we can't just live on the transfer portal. I think for Georgia Tech to be successful, yes, you have to get old and stay old, but you have to get a mix. You've got to get yes. a mix of high school kids plus kids in the portal. So there could be some times where you maybe have a year where you're trying to get back to rebuild and, and then – back high and then maybe you have two or three years where you're really high and then maybe because if at Georgia Tech you're not going to be able to get you know just a bunch of junior college kids or even portal kids because of the academics so it's yes. a mix and that's what I believe in the vision if we just stay towards our vision we're going to continue to be good and and we just got to keep buying into the to the long term of that and Josh as I told people when Tadrick went to the NBA which is unexpected that slowed down the rebuild because yeah. That first year there, he got to the NIT and he played and you, so no, well. And you, and you mean Josh Akogi? Josh Yeah, Akogi. No, yeah Josh. My father, Josh yeah, Josh. My father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like, you know, so that's that slowed it down. And I try to tell people, stick with the plan. Josh yeah. is under control. Because, you know, well, you know how y'all fans are, Josh. They, they get impatient. They don't, yeah. don't want to wait for you. <laughs> well, well, no, no, you're exactly right. But let me say this about, about Josh Akogi because you're right. No, I, I knew how good he was, and we developed him, and he got better and better and better. The plan I had foresaw him leaving after his junior year. What we got caught off guard was him being the top 20 pick after his sophomore year, which is – I'm so happy for Josh Okogi. It's yes. the best thing for him. But, which, again, you can – and I say I take the blame on this. I wasn't prepared for that um, because two reasons. One, you know, when you're trying to sign some guys in the fall – you didn't expect him to be leaving after a sophomore year to be the top 20 pick. I had projected him to be the top 20 pick after his junior year. Secondly, when he went into the draft, he did not sign with an agent initially. And at Georgia Tech, you can't oversign. So during the process, because he was our 13th scholarship and I was waiting for him because I didn't want to sign someone and he says, I want to come back. You can't do that. At Georgia Tech, they wouldn't allow you to do that. So I had to wait for him to make his decision, which he made it in May. 
Well, when he makes his decision in May, they're saying, coach, I'm going to end up staying in the draft. I'm going to sign with an agent and forego my, my eligibility. There's not players available in May that are, that can replace Josh Okogie. And, and, and so that was, that's part of it. And so um, it's no one's fault. Again, I, I, and, you, and if anyone is fault, it's me, but that did slow us down a little bit because I think if Josh didn't leave that, ju- that, that third year, we would have been really, really good because you saw the fourth year we finished fifth, but yeah. it worked out. And, and, and in this business, it's what's best for the young man. And, yes. it was, and to have a chance to be the 20th pick, to, to change your life, your family's life, to play in the NBA, to be that for you, you, you it, I would trade every win for, for the young man because that's what it's about. I want to see those kids succeed. And, and, and Josh Okozi, Okogi is a real success story. That's what I talk to the fans here, the coaches, is this, man. You got to trust the plans and know it's about the young men. You know, I know you want wins and you want this and that, but it's, it's, it's a process to it. And if you don't trust the process, trust the process. And look, if you trust it, look, year five, it happened. It was a man of your word. And coming here, as I told you when you first got hired, it was great for you because I knew it. And, I, and I, I felt it then. And I feel even more greater now because you have a great class coming in next year. And hopefully you may have those seniors back. But if yep. you don't, you have a great mix of guys who are coming in and returning. So even the way Georgia Tech basketball is in great shape from 21 yep. and beyond. Well, you're exactly right. And, 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 and so obviously, and, and what we did this year with the success that we had, um, it's going to pay dividends for us in the recruiting. And, and like you said, we got a top 15 class coming in, but it's going to pay dividends for us in the 2022 recruiting class and, and beyond. So we can actually continue to, to build from just continuing to get really good players and, um, and so I'm really excited about that. Now, we don't want to lose who we are culturally because oh, yeah. if you're going to play here, you got to be a good player, but, but you better compete. And because if you're not a competitor then, then, and just talented, that's not going to work either. You've got to be a competitor. We've established that. That's who we are. That's our standard. That's our culture. It's all about you know, competitive excellence. And, uh, um, and we got to continue to make sure that we develop, evaluate in the recruiting but there's tangibles, those guys fit that. You can be really talented and ranked high, but if you're not a competitor, then you, then maybe Georgia Tech's not the right fit for you. Most definitely. And what and you're a staff coach. Tell us about your staff. Cause I, I, I tell people, watch Chris on the bench. Chris is so into it. You know, <laughs> I love your staff, man. They're into it right there, which your, 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 your coaches coach hard, your players are into it, sharing hard. Tell us how this was about the – your team and your staff and how close you all are, how you all together as one, one Georgia Tech to get the job done and make the city of Atlanta proud. Yep. I've got a great staff. You're only as good as your staff. And I've got tremendous coaches, tremendous support staff. I, I've got really good teachers of the game. My, my, my assistants are very, very good teachers and, and, and coaches. So uh, they know how to develop and get guys better and, and, and that's part of it. You know, everyone talks about recruiting, recruiting, recruiting. Yes, you got to recruit. We all know that. But it does you no good if you recruit and then the guys don't get better. Correct. And sometimes the best recruiting um, uh, platform is that your guys get better because you can go sell it. Because what young person doesn't want to get better to improve to give them their best chance to be a professional? And um, um, but, you know, we use the word connectivity a lot, you know, and I think that's really important. And, and within our culture, our chemistry, the camaraderie, everyone's really connected together. And, um, and that's what makes our team and, and who we are and our program and why we were able to achieve eight straight ACC wins with an ACC championship. That's hard to do. That was a tremendous accomplishment. I was just so darn proud of our young men. And Josh, tell us about this, man. I, I love the respect of that Rob Lanier has for you and Greg Gary and Amir and Lamont Paris. I had Rob on the show. He talked about how good a person you are because you did not have to play them at, at their at their new place and you signed a new contract. Tell us about that, how big it is for you guys to play Georgia State at their new basketball arena down at, down at the old stadium here and, and how that is for the city having you guys play, that, play, play each other the way you are going to be doing here real, real, real soon here. Yep. No. And, 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 and Greg Gary's a coach at Mercer and, and um, uh, Amir's the coach over at, uh, at Kennesaw uh, state. And, and obviously coach Lanier's over at uh, Georgia state and, and all three are great coaches, great guys. Um, I, I, I really should be, someone should kick me in the shin and punch me in the nose for even scheduling those games because they beat us. Because they beat us. So I'm like, you know, and I keep telling them like, what was I thinking? 
you know, for goodness gracious, what was I thinking? But, um, um, but it's good to give back to help the local schools. There's no doubt about that. And I thought it would be really cool to be part of the Georgia State, you know, when they open their arena, kind of be the, the, the big name coming in there to play them. It should be a great atmosphere. Um, and, um, and, and that's going to happen in 22-23. So they're opening their new arena in 22-23. So not this next season, but the season after we'll be at Georgia State. But I, but I think it's important to, to be good to the, to the local schools. And yes, I, I, and I tell people like Rob Lanier, Greg Gary, you know, uh, uh, Coach Amir. I mean, those guys, they do a great job. And, and when you play them, it's a hard game. Oh, yeah. and obviously, we've been beaten by them. And so, you know, you, you're going to have to prepare. You're going to have to – and they do a great job with their teams. They're very good coaches. And they're dangerous games because they can beat you. But – you know, if you're going to lose, at least lose to a local school and, 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 you know, and it's good for the, just because we're all under the kind of the same, you know, with the board of regents and, and the, and the university system and all that stuff. So, and, it, and it's good for locally, but I really do believe that game in 22, 23, I'm actually looking forward to that because that should be like a complete sellout, totally energy, enthusiasm to open up the Georgia State new arena when that's being built and officially done. Now, Georgia State's coming to play us again this year at home, 21-22, and then obviously we'll finish out playing at their spot, 22-23. And Rob said, he said, it just speaks about who, who Josh is. Josh doesn't have to play us at all if he doesn't want to. He can easily say no, but that speaks to the fact that who he is as a person to allow us the opportunity to have them come to our arena when we open it up. So he's, he spoke glowingly about – how a great approach you want to do that. And my listeners really took heed of that. I said, yes. I told you all the time, Josh is a great guy. He, he's, a, he's a real dude, man, because you, you got to do that because you don't have to, but you chose to, which shows that you really care about the basketball here in Georgia, up and down I, I the I corridor here. I mean, look, I mean, when when Mercer and, and Georgia State were playing in their in their conference championships, respectively, I was there was not a bigger cheerleader than myself. Like, I was one of those guys to win so bad. And uh, I was just rooting for them like crazy. And unless they're playing against us, I want them to win every game. And um, so, no, I think it's important for the city. I think it's important for the local schools. Look, I get it. I mean, Georgia, we're in the ACC. We're going to have a bigger budget than, than those other schools. So if, if it's an opportunity to, to – again, we want to win the game, but it's if an opportunity to, to, to bring – a light on their programs. I mean, you know, last year we played Morehouse, or not, not this past season, but the season before um, we played Morehouse. And, um, you know, we were looking to actually play Clark this year in, in, a, in a game, but because of COVID that, you know, that got shut down. But so we want to do right by the local schools. I think that's important. Um, uh, you know, it's important to me. And uh, yes, they want to beat us. We want to beat them. But when it's all said and done after the game, it's good for basketball in this city. And Josh, I want to ask you about Coach Laurie Pierce. I know he's no longer the Hawks coach. He's a great man for our community. I know he did a lot of Zooms with coaches this past offseason during, during, the, during the quarantine. Tell us about those Zooms he did for college coaches, let, 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 allowing you all inside a little bit, having guests from the Hawks come talk to you all, and what he did for our city of Atlanta as well with the civil, social injustice, the voting he, he did for our city. Tell us about the city of Atlanta, how we will miss Laurie Pierce going forward here in Atlanta. Yeah, Coach Pierce is awesome. Absolutely awesome. I was, you know, uh, I, I was crushed when I saw him, you know, not being able to continue on. And obviously that's the, that's the world of the NBA, you know, I mean, yes. Coach Pierce knows that better. I mean, in those jobs, I mean, those are just all hard jobs. And I thought coach Pierce did a great job. Um, he's an incredible human being. And, you know, um, what I would say is, you know, when it's all said and done and the good Lord takes you away and hopefully that's for all of us, it's a long time for now. But like for, I mean, and you know, you're not going to put your record on the tombstone. They don't put, hey, you were, you, you had a 70% winning percentage or a 65% or you won this game. What's going to be remembered is the, is the impact you made on, on people and on lives and, 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 you know, whether, you know, just everybody involved and on a community and no one has made a bigger impact than Coach Pierce and, and, uh, and, and, and the Atlanta Hawks. I mean, they have done so many good things and, Coach Pierce is, is a huge part of that. And so he can always lay his head on the softest pillow at night, which is a clear conscience, knowing that, you know, the, the, the impact he made on the people in the community that will not just last. We're not talking like one year. It's going to last a lifetime way beyond, you know, our kids and their kids yes. and, and all those type of things. So, 
Uh, God bless Coach Pierce. I'm sure he'll get another opportunity along the way, you know, in the NBA. He'll get another opportunity to, to, to – and he did a great job there. And, you know, he took over when they were starting kind of, you know, rebuilding there with the Hawks. So um, uh, a lot of uh, kudos and credit to, to, to Coach Pierce. That's something for you, Coach. Is the thoughts on El- Elgin Baylor who passed away today? Uh, he's a a great guy. I've met him a few times, and I really was a big fan of reading about him. So tell us about your thoughts about Coach El- Elgin Baylor and what he meant to the best thing in basketball and in life and in our society in general. Yeah, I I saw his, I saw on, on ESPN today that he had passed away, and he's a giant in the basketball community. I mean, I mean, he, he supersedes just basketball. So people know who Elgin Baylor is. You don't have, you know, some, some people, you only know someone from just being in the sport or, or, you know, or you follow the sport. Elgin Baylor, everyone knows him, whether you're a basketball person or you're not. And um, I, the talk about him breaking barriers, uh, the, the, the things that he he's done in the communities of wherever or at all the different locations he's been, uh, just talking about him as a basketball player, oh my goodness, how good was that guy? I don't think people in this generation understand how good Elgin Baylor was as a basketball player. And, and uh, he was incredible. I mean, you see those highlights and everything, unbelievable. So, um, you know, God rest his soul and prayers to his family. And, and just like Coach Pierce, you know, the, the, the difference he had, you know, Coach Elgin Baylor or Mr. Baylor has made uh, with so many people and so many generations that will last a lifetime longer than, 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 um, than actual scoring a basket or not. And so, um, you know, that's just kind of how, that's just the way it goes. Unfortunately, as you, it, as we all know, unfortunately life comes death and, and uh, that's why you just live life to the fullest. You enjoy every day and um, you just, you know, you don't take anything for granted. You got that right, Coach Pastor. I look forward to seeing you next year, man. I got my first shot of vaccine. I got got another, got another shot coming. So hopefully, yeah. I'll be to see you guys next this fall. Let me say this: it, 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 and I, and I'm, you know, pretty soon here. We're all going to be vaccinated. I, Georgia Tech, they're doing some great things, and I'll be fitting. The, I'm in the next group here sooner than later to, to be able to get vaccinated. So we're all looking forward to that because we're all looking forward to get the back to where there's fans. And, and you can come to the games and I can have the team at my house. I mean, I, you know, I don't have to worry about who sits where on the bus and who sits where on the bench. And I, you can just go back to kind of some normalcy in a way. So we're all looking forward to that. Um, and um, just, you know, let's, you know, the, 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 as soon as all that happens and the vaccinations and we can get rid of COVID, um, the better for everybody. Yeah, I miss seeing you post game after you win, man. I love miss coming by to see you after you win, man. Hey, <laughs> Do a post game. I've enjoyed the Zoom, but I'm zoomed out. Let's get ready to get back post game with people. No more zooms in post game. Let's get to back to where everyone's together, so we can, so everyone can answer, ask me questions face to face. I, I'd rather, I'd prefer that. Yes, indeed. But Josh, you have a great offseason, buddy. I'll talk to you real soon. I'll be in touch, buddy, as always, man. I, I'm a big supporter of you, as you already know, man. I love you, man. You too. Love you too. Appreciate you so much. It's time, buddy. Be good now.